Josh Hartney, Joseph Gordon-Levy and LL Cool J once appeared in a Halloween movie, believe it or not. What is up everyone, Movie Way, I'm back again with another review and it's going to be for the 1998 film Halloween H2O 20 years later and it's directed by Steve Miner and stars Jamie Lee Curtis and Josh Hartnett. This tells the story of Laurie Strode 20 years after the events of the first film and how she is still not over the traumatic events of that night. Meanwhile, Michael Myers plans on giving her a visit on Halloween night. Now, Halloween H2O is one of the films in the franchise that I actually do have a lot of memories of. I remember watching this quite a lot back in the day. And this and the original were the ones that I could remember the most out of all these movies. And I remember really, really liking it. But what do I think 24 years later? Let's find out. First off, this is a very 90s horror flick. You've got the high school, you've got the high school teens, you've got the rapper thrown in there, and you've even got one of them movie posters where all the characters in the film just stare at the camera and there's like, what, five of them on the cover there? Yeah, there was a lot of them posters. They all look the same. Now, when fans of this franchise actually watched this film, it must have felt a little bit weird to them because they reckoned a lot of this franchise that came before it. Obviously, they kept the events of the first movie. I think the second one as well. But they also have Jamie Lee Curtis' character, Laurie, was in a car crash, but she changed their name and stuff, so that all happened. And we heard about that in part four. But no mention of Jamie Lloyd, no mention of this cult or Michael popping up at them Halloweens. So, they kept a handful and threw a lot away there. And I don't know if this was unheard of at the time or any franchise is doing this. But it's the first of the kind that I kind of remember. I also think bringing Laurie back was a good idea at this moment in time. Because it kind of lost its way with Halloween 6. I liked the directions it tried to go in. But it was just executed so poorly that... Where else could you go? So setting this 20 years later and just throwing Jamie Lee Curtis on the front of the poster there will have made people sit up and say, yes, Michael Myers is back, Halloween's back, even diehard fans of this franchise, surely. I also like the story path they went with with Laurie Strode in this because even though she escaped that night in the original, it's very much stuck with her for these past 20 years. You know, the mental scars are all still there. She's seeing Michael in reflections in windows, in the mirror all the time. People who bump into her in work. You know, she's jumping out of her skin all the time. You know, people who walk around the corner, she thinks it's Michael again. And it's creating a massive divide between her and her son. She's a functioning alcoholic. So I like the way they brought all that in to Laurie Strode. Because, you know, it just shows the impact Michael Myers has on people's lives. Look, I know today is the day, but I think... Oh, really? What day is that, John? Halloween. Oh, I hadn't noticed. I actually think this is one of the best paced and most easy to watch Halloween films, even possibly more than the original. It just absolutely flew by. It was very, very simple. And Steve Miner just knows the slasher genre. He has directed Friday the 13th Part 2 and 3. So to bring him in was a good idea, I thought. You know, keep it very, very simple. And try and get the franchise back on track. Some people may not like that, but for me, it definitely worked after part five and six. And this film is helped by a few things. One of them things is the characters here. I thought Josh Hartnett was a good character to have as Laurie Strode's son. He's always trying to get his mum back on the straight and narrow and stuff. But he's also losing patience, so that story arc really worked with them too. And we've also got his girlfriend... And his best friend and his girlfriend, they were like a four good characters to sort of get behind. By the way, his friend is Alan Paris from Jumanji, who I have, don't think I've ever seen another film apart from that and this. But none of them absolutely stood out or anything. But none of them were ever annoying or unlikable to be around. And you know what? I actually think LL Cool J has some acting talent. I know a lot of people may disagree with that and it was just a thing to throw rappers into horror movies in the 90s, but I actually think he brings a little bit to this movie. He was a good side character. I don't think he's a bad actor at all and he's been in a few films by now and at this time he had been in a big one called Deep Blue Sea. So, yeah, he weren't just thrown in because he's this famous rapper. He actually 
could act. I thought, and he has some of the most funny dialogue in this movie as well. He's like want to be this erotic novelist. He's trying his best to write these stories and stuff. And he's on the phone to his girlfriend, who's always shooting him down and saying he's not good enough. He needs to go and get a better job. But some of the dialogue he writes down is just so funny. Like at one point he says, she, he looked up at a large melon breasts. <laughs> No wonder she kept shooting them down. This has some really cool moments going for it as well. I always like the opening of this film where Joseph Gordon-Levy gets a skate just drove right through his skull there. Now, I know it's all off camera, but it's definitely implied what happened because you can just see the fucking ice skate just slicing his face up there and stuff. But... I always remember this opening scene being filled with lots of tension. It's a great opening, and it has stood the test of time. It was great once again here, and it just brought back all those memories that when I used to watch Hates to All and love it. And there's also other scenes where Jamie Lee Curtis's boyfriend in this, sorry, Laurie Strode's boyfriend in this, who she's seeing at this other teacher, Michael just sticks a knife into his side there and kind of just lifts him up with the knife and I was like, oh, that looks painful. I kind of felt it as it happened. Well. I actually think there's a scene here that is probably one of the best moments in the entire Halloween franchise up to now is where Laurie is being chased by Michael Myers and she slams this door shut and there's this round window in the door and she just turns around and Michael Myers is there just right in her face finally her nemesis has come face to face with her after 20 years this man who has plagued her all her life in these reflections and mirrors and windows in her mind is there right in front of her and I thought that was cool as fuck the way that was filmed <laughs> I also thought Michael Myers was quite menacing in this movie. He seemed to walk a lot quicker, which made him a little bit more scary. And there's a moment where Josh Hartnett, whose character's named John in this movie, slams the gate shut and locks the gate. And Michael Myers puts his arm through the gate and just wants to swipe and kill him as fast as he can. He's swinging a knife all over the place. And he is just wanting to do anything he can to get this knife through Josh Hartnett. And I'm like... Fucking hell, Michael, calm down. He just seemed so pissed off in this movie. I suppose you would be if you were a badass murderer who hadn't killed for 20 years. I also think this film had a very good third act where Laurie Strode decides to just face off against Michael on her own. She has tried everything to get over this. She's tried shrinks, she's tried therapy, she's tried medication and nothing is working for her. And maybe, maybe... Her killing Michael is the only way, and I thought it was quite badass of her to do that, especially the climax of this film, which again is one of the best Halloween moments in the franchise. Michael just jammed up against that tree there, like a helpless puppy dog, and he's reaching his arms out, asking for help for Laurie, and you don't quite know what's going to happen. And Laurie just takes an axe and decapitates the motherfucker. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Surely there's no coming back for Michael Myers now, is there? <laughs> there are a few things about H2O that I don't like, though. And I've got to say the mask. I mean, everything looked right. But man, why didn't you just make it dark around the eyes? I mean, <laughs> Every time there's a close-up of Michael Myers, the scare factor is just took away because it just looks so ridiculous around the eyes. And I was like, oh, why are them cut out so big? Couldn't you put a bit of makeup at least on his skin or something? He looked better than part six, which is a little bit of a crime, really. There's also really no explanation as to why Michael Myers waited 20 years to come after Lordy Strode here. It's like the creators or the writers just couldn't think of anything, so they just left it out. Now, it does play on it a tiny bit with Laurie Strode saying, well, he waited 15 years once, why wouldn't he wait 20? But that doesn't really make it a reason, does it now? I'm also not really a fan of this version of the score. It just feels too tinkered with and tries to revive something that was perfect. Why would you mess with perfection? 
if you're gonna change the score, just do it a little tiny bit. It's just a little bit too different for me, unfortunately. Also, what's the deal with the way John, played by Josh Hartner, looks in this movie? I liked his character, but man, he's got his cuffs out, he's got his shirt pulled out of his trousers and not tucked in, his tie is down here, his hair's a mess, it looks like he's been brushed with a shoe, and LL Cool J even says to him, go and sort your hair out at one point in this film. I get that they're trying to make him this cool character in the school, but it was just so off-putting and I hated the way he looked really scruffy in this movie. The film does suffer from a lot of horror cliches that were just plagued in horror movies in the 90s. I can sort of forgive it a little bit because it happened a lot then, but it does grate on me. We've got the usual hand on the shoulder stuff. A character is stabbed in the leg so he can't hardly walk and he's got to be helped everywhere while Michael's in, in pursuit and slowing him down. We've got characters being shot at because they think it's Michael Myers and it turns out to not be him. Just that usual type of lazy stuff, really. It's the only word for it. I've saved this for last because I feel like I've got to upset a lot of people here, but I'm just not a fan of Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie. Yes, I like the story that they have for her, she's, it's quite interesting at times, but I think it's just her performance. I mean, I don't like the fact that she feels very, very different to Laurie Strode from the original film. I know she's suffered years of torment, but they feel too detached. It's, it's like she's playing a different character at times. Her accent as well, I just can't deal with it. It just grates on me a little bit there. And the fact that she's always violently shouting at her son... It's just very, very off -putting. and I didn't want to get behind her. She just seemed like a bit of a bitch, to be honest, and not a very nice person. Look, I'm just going to be honest now. I've said it before. I'm just not a big fan of Jamie Lee Curtis. Sorry about that, Jamie Lee Curtis fans, but it's the truth. That's just my opinion. Overall, though, I did have a very good time with this film. It doesn't require too much thought process. It's just a good Michael Myers slashes movie, and one that you can go into and have a lot of fun with. I'm just going to go ahead and make this movie now. I'm going to give Halloween H2O a 7 out of 10. It's good to see the franchise once again get back on track. Okay, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now, a fun fact for Halloween H2O is that before Jamie Lee Curtis was involved, or Josh Hartnett knew of this, he didn't want to be involved in this movie. And he's quoted as saying, Halloween 7, isn't that a straight-to-video movie or more like a straight-to-hell movie? Okay, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this review. What are your thoughts on Halloween H2O 20 years later? Leave it down below in the comments. I'll try and get back to you all, I promise. And we do have Halloween Resurrection coming up next. <laughs> so look out for that. Don't forget to like this video and give us a subscribe for all my other Halloween reviews. They will be in the link down below. Take it all easy, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.